So you want to grow up and become a chemist. Okay, stop, stop, la stop laughing. I, if you said yes, I probably wouldn't have believed you anyway. But just go with me here. So let's say you want to be the best chemist, or at the very least the best chemistry student that you can be, and you're performing a lab and you want to know if your lab's going to be successful or not. Well, is, is there some way we can figure out how to do that? Sure. Or else, I guess this video is kind of pointless. Well, in your quest to be the best chemist you can be, you need to figure out how efficient your reaction is. That is, how close is it to the actual accepted value? And there's two terms that we need to know in order to establish this. We need to understand the actual yield and we need to understand the theoretical yield. Now what the actual yield is the actual, surprising, right? Actual mass that you obtain in a chemical reaction or actual number of moles, but let's go with mass. The actual mass that you obtain in a chemical reaction. The theoretical one is the one that you calculate. So theoretically, if everything went perfect, that would be the mass that you should obtain in that particular reaction. And if we compare these two things together, what we come up with is our percent yield. So you can kind of think of percent yield almost the same way that you would calculate a mark. If you were going to calculate your mark on a quiz or a test, what you would do is you would take the mark that you actually got and compare it to the mark that you theoretically could have got had you gotten perfect. And then you're going to represent it as a percentage and that's going to give you the percentage or your percentage of success, if you want to think of it that way, on your particular test or quiz or assignment. Now percent yield kind of acts in the same way. What it does is it takes the actual mass that you obtain from that chemical reaction and compares it to the theoretical mass that you should have got based on your stoichiometric calculations. So there it is again, that stoichiometry that you're going to use to calculate how much product should be produced. And then in comparing those two things, we're going to try to establish what your theoretical yield and actual yield do to calculate your percentage yield and your percentage yield is going to dictate how successful you were in your reaction. So in trying to establish how successful a chemist you were or a chemistry student you were, at least in terms of how close you were to the accepted value of your particular reaction, you compare your actual yield to your theoretical yield in order to calculate your percent yield. And the closer you are to 100, the better you are in terms of your experiment. Well, at least theoretically. You see, sometimes you can have percent yields that are greater than 100%. Now, does that mean you're the best chemist in the world? No, probably not. What that means is there's probably some error in your experiment, some additional mass that you didn't account for. So while it is possible to have a percent yield greater than 100%, the likelihood is that there was probably some experimental error there in that result. But the closer you are to 100% generally, without going over, the more successful your experiment is. So hopefully you can shoot for that the next time you do a chemical reaction in performing a lab. Hopefully this video, as short as it is, was able to help you figure out how successful reactions can be, or at least how you can evaluate how successful your reactions can be through something that we call percent yield. Thanks for watching. Did you like this video? Did you not like the video? Was there something that seemed like it was a little off? Well, either way, we want to hear about it. So like us or leave a comment in the section below as to things that we could change or improve. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to our channel on YouTube or follow us on Twitter.